Oh yeah. So yeah, this time I'm starting with Sirius. So to start with Sirius, I want all of you to know the basics of, uh, of a cardiovascular system that is cardiac cycle. Okay. So this is Sirius class four to these students. Yeah, okay. This is audible, right, Karan? Sir, audible, sir. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. So first we start with cardiac cycle. So what is cardiac cycle? Cardiac cycle is nothing but an study of electrical and mechanical changes. Study of electrical and mechanical changes that are occurred in a heartbeat from one beat to another. That occurred in a heart from one beat to another. Between two beats between a two heart beat, what is happening? Both electrically and mechanical changes. Okay. Mecha mechanical changes that occurs in heart from one beat to another. Okay. From one beat to another. So, time for cardiac cycle is approximately uh, 0 0.8 seconds. So, it's nothing but the normal heartbeat is 72 and for, for 72 for 1 minute so 60 seconds which means that your uh, cardiac cycle takes place for from 0 0.83 seconds approximately which we make into 0 0.8 seconds so a cardiac cycle will have two phase one changes which is happening in the atrium and other changes which is happening in the ventricles so we again split it into two things systole and diastole so systole is nothing but pumping of blood, pumping of blood from one sample to another and diastole is nothing but a relaxation, a relaxation to receive the blood. Systole is sending the blood outside and diastole is receiving the blood. So atrial, so again we will have systole and diastole. The atrium part will have both systole and diastole. The atrial systole will happen for approximately 0.1 second and diastole will happen for 0.7 seconds. And this is all for a heartbeat of approximately 72 to 75 per minute. And in case of tachycardia, this duration will be shortened. And in case of bradycardia, this duration will be prolonged. So we are studying the normal physiology. So keeping the heart rate of around 72 to 75, the time taken for a cardiac cycle is for 0 0.8 second, of which the atrial systole will happen for 0 0.1 second, and atrial diastole will happen for 0 0.7 second. And this is all about physiology. Okay. So ventricle 2, we are having two phases, systole and your diastole. So ventricular systole will happen for 0 0.3 seconds and your ventricular diastole will happen for 0 0.3 seconds. And regarding this systole and diastole, from here on, if I mean a systole, it means ventricular systole and uh, if I mean diastole, it is all about ventricular diastole. When the ventricle is in systole phase, your atrium will be on diastole phase. The ventricle is pumping the blood out, your atrium will be receiving the blood. So this is all about normal cardiac cycle. So from here on, if I mean systole, it means the vent it means ventricular systole, and if I mean diastole, it is all about ventricular diastole. Okay. So ventricular systole, there are three phases. First phase is isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction. It doesn't mean it, it is uh, very simple. Isovolumetric. The amount of volume inside the chamber is going to be same, and the ventricle is contracting with the same volume. So what, what how it helps? Helps to increase the pressure inside the ventricular chamber. So isovolumetric contraction, the function of the isovolumetric contraction is to increase the pressure, pressure inside the ventricular chamber. Okay, so first phase is isovolumetric contraction, and the second phase is the rapid ejection phase, and third phase is your slow ejection phase. So together we will calling it as your ejection phase. So ventricular systole will have two phase isovolumetric contraction and ejection phase and ejection phase we will divide it into two things your rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase okay so diastole diastole will be having four phases first thing is isovolumetric relaxation so after contraction your ventricle should be relaxed so volume inside the ventricle will be same and will be relaxing so this is called as isovolumetric relaxation so during this phase your uh, pressure inside the ventricular chamber will rapidly come down so we will see what is the use of this isovolumetric contraction, isovolumetric relaxation in the subsequent uh, points. So next is first rapid filling phase, rapid filling phase and second 
and third phase is nothing but your diastasis this is nothing but a phase of relaxation and the ventricle disease and the ventricle receives the least amount of blood during the diastasis and then your second rapid filling phase which which is nothing but your atrial systole okay so we'll be seeing this in coming time so what are the pressure what is the pressure in the ventricle during this phase pressure in the atrium and ventricle so regarding the study of pressure in atrium during the systole in right atrium it is approximately 4 to 6 mm of mercury and in left atrium it is approximately 6 to 8 mm of mercury i want all of you to take notes along with me so this will be very helpful for you to understand the physiology okay so in diastole in both right atrium and left atrium your pressure will be around 0 to 3 mm of mercury okay so next step, what is the pressure in aorta in aorta during your systole and diastole so aortic systolic pressure is nothing but your systolic bp which is normally around 120 and the diastolic bp which is normally around 80 mm of mercury and here we are adding some absolute value which is normal which we consider as normal so aortic systolic bp aortic systolic bp is nothing but your normal blood, systolic blood pressure which is around 120 and diastolic blood pressure which is around 80 and in left ventricle during systole it will be around 120 mm of mercury it will go up to 160 mm of mercury from 0 to 120 Okay, we will be seeing the pressure cover later, and during diastole it will be around only zero to five millimeter. Like during early part of diastole it will be five, and at the end of the diastole it will be around five. Sorry, in the early part of the diastole it will be around six, uh, around zero, and in the late part of diastole it will be around five. Okay, then in pulmonary artery, what is your pulmonary artery systolic BP it will be around twenty-five, and pulmonary diastole BP will be around nine, and your right ventricular systolic BP will be around twenty-five. And right on the cord, diastolic BP will be around zero. Okay. So next, moving on towards the pressure curve. Okay, just draw along with me. So first phase, as I told, is nothing but a isovolumetric contraction. First phase is nothing but a your isovolumetric contraction. Okay. Then your second phase is nothing but your ejection. So this both will contribute your ventricular systole. So this both. will contribute your ventricular systole okay so the next phase is nothing but your isovolumetric relaxation okay so next phase is about metric relaxation and your next phase is first rapid filling phase and your next phase is diastasis and your last phase is second rapid filling phase so this is so all these will contribute to your diastole so okay So as I said earlier, what is the pressure at the end of your uh, diastole? Your LB pressure at the end of your diastole is around five millimeter of mercury. So what happens when it, uh, when your ventricles go going for isovolumetric contraction? Your pressure will rise. Your pressure will rise because The volume is same, but the ventricular muscles are contracting. 
which will reduce the space inside the space inside your lv and which will increase your pressure so once it comes into 80 mm of mercury which is nothing but your diastolic dp your aortic valve or pulmonary valve opens pulmonary valve opens okay so once this valve open the blood inside the left ventricle and right ventricle is pushed into the aorta and uh, your uh, pulmonary artery respectively and your pressure keeps on increasing it will go up to 120 which is nothing but our maximum systolic bp and then once the uh, blood has been pushed into the left vent uh, into the aorta or pulmonary artery it will be coming down and since we are speaking about the left ventricle and aorta i am keeping this as pressure in case of your right ventricular pulmonary artery, we will be keeping it around 25 and 9. This 80 will become 9 and this 120 will become 25. And just of nothing of, just of not that much significant. And left ventricular is of significant, so I am keeping it as 120 and 80. So this will come down. And once the pressure comes down, after the release of blood, once the volume, uh, volume inside the ventricle goes out, your BP will come, your pressure inside the ventricle will come down. And once it reaches 80, again, which is less than the your di diastolic BP, your aortic valve closes. Aortic valve closes. Once the aortic valve closes, it will produce the sound of your S2. Okay. So you ask, uh, your aortic valve is closed. So what happens? It comes to the next phase of diastole. First phase of diastole is isovolumetric relaxation. With the same vol volume of the blood, your ventricle is going for relaxation. Your ventricle is going for relaxation. So the pressure rapidly comes down to approximately zero. Once it has come down to zero, what happens? Your mitral or your tricuspid valve opens. Your mitral or tricuspid valve opens. So there will be rush of ventricle blood from the atrium into ventricle. So first there will be rapid filling phase. This will then to go into a stage of phase of diastasis. So in these two phase, almost two third filling happens. Two third filling happens. Okay. So next, next one third of the blood has to be pushed pushed by the atrium into ventricle, and which we call as atrial systole. So again, after the after the ventricular diastole, your blood pressure will be again 5 millimeter of mercury inside the left ventricle, and once it reaches this 5 millimeter of mercury, your aortic valve closes. Sorry, your mitral valve, mitral or tricuspid valve will close, and will produce the sound of S2. Okay, so S1 is nothing but your closer of the aortic, uh, aortic or uh, pulmonary valve, sorry, yes, your S1 will happen, your, I am sorry, your S1 will happen here. So S1 is due to closer of the mitral or tricuspid valve and your S2 is due to closer of your aortic or pulmonary valve and here there will be hard sound of S3. So when you come here, this is where your S1 happens, right, this is where your S1 happens. Here your mitral or tricuspid valve will close. Okay. So your S3. So we have, we, as you all know, we have four heart sounds: S1, S2, S3, and S4. And your S3 will happen in the rap, first rapid filling phase, and your S4 will happen in the second rapid filling phase. And I will tell later why the S3 and S4 happens. Okay. So as you all know, the X1 happens due to closure of atrioventricular valve, which is nothing but your mitral or tricuspid valves. Okay, mitral or your tricuspid valves. And these are all basic physiology which you have learned in your first year. Just I want to uh, I want to all to refresh this. And S2 is due to your closer off your 
आयोटिक और पल्मनरी वाल ओके सो एस वन विल हैपन एट द ऑनसेट ऑफ सिस्टोल एंड एस टू विल हैपन एट द एंड ऑफ द सिस्टोल सो एस थ्री विल हैपन इन द फर्स्ट एपी फिलिंग फेस एंड हैपन्स ड्यू टू द रश ऑफ ब्लड इनटू योर वेंट्रिकुलर इनटू योर लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल और राइट वेंट्रिकल so usually we don't hear s3 and if we, we hear s3 when there is huge amount of blood inside the your atrium which is rushing into the ventricle this happens which happens during your first rapid filling phase so s4 will happen because of contraction of the atrium against your stiff ventricle okay this will happen during your second rapid filling phase and we will discuss in detail about this s3 and s4 about the pathological cost of s3 pathological cost of s4 when we deal in the uh, heart sounds okay which will be seeing which will be seeing later in later classes in subsequent classes so to brief about the cardiac cycle at s1 what is your lv pressure your lv pressure is around 5 mm of mercury then what happens your isovolumetric contraction happens so your left ventricular bp sorry left ventricular pressure your left ventricular pressure matches the diastolic bp there will be your opening of opening of your aortic valve so then your fast ejection phase will come to happen fuel your lv pressure around 120 once it reaches 120 the slow ejection phase will happen till your lv pressure is this 80 mm of mercury once it reaches the 80 mm of mercury what happens at again 80 mm of mercury that is your diastolic bp your aortic valve aortic valve closes okay so then it will go for a phase of isovolumetric relaxation so automatically your lv pressure will reduce up to zero so then it will there will will have ventricular diastole in the form of first rapid filling phase diastasis and your second rapid filling phase at the end of your ventricular diastole your lv pressure will at 5 mm of mercury when the lv pressure reaches the 5 mm of mercury your mitral valve closes okay then again this happens when the lv pressure reaches the 5 mm of mercury this happens so it is a cycle and this will happen again and again and again okay and here if we trace the blood pressure inside the aorta if we trace the blood pressure inside the aorta so i choose blue how will be the pressure inside aorta during the systole to slowly increase to slowly increase so to slowly increase during this during this it will go up to 120 and then it will be start starting to come down during the end phase of the stole it will be around it will be somewhere around more than 80 only then what happens because of the pressure inside the left ventricle at this point is low at this point so the pressure inside the left ventricle is somewhere around 80 so 
whereas your pressure inside the iota is somewhere around 100 what happens the blood from the iota the blood from the iota tends to uh, press the fluid tends to come from the high pressure area to low pressure area that is common physiology so blood being a fluid will try to come from iota inside the left ventricle inside the left ventricle but your left ventricle is closed but your left ventricle is closed with the help of your aortic valve so that will produce a notch here because of the stuck of the blood the blood one it will hit it will hit on the aortic valve and will produce a notch here and that we will call it as incisura okay we will call it as incisura and then during the phase of diastole it will start coming down slowly it will come down to 80 millimeter of mercury 80 millimeter of mercury which is your diastolic bp so your systolic bp will come up, up, up to 120 millimeter of mercury and then up to uh, 80 mm then your diastolic bp will come up to 80 millimeter of mercury okay so this is all about basics of cardiac cycle and then we are moving into our ne next chapter your pulse moving into our next chapter this pulse so what is pulse pulse is nothing but a defined pulse pulse is defined as a pressure distension wave this nothing but a wave form this nothing but a wave which is produced due to contraction of the left ventricle due to contraction of the left ventricle against partially filled iota against your partially filled iota which is felt in the periphery artery against bony prominence so these are all some of the favorite question for this old exam that uh, the Generally, I don't like the, all these definitions, but I am telling this because the uh, this old fashioned examiners, someone around uh, 50 to 60 years of age, they do like these questions. Definition of pulse, definition of JEP, definition of blood pressure, definition of uh, your apical impulse. These are all favorite questions for them. They will start with this. So, as I told us, this is nothing but a waveform. This is nothing but a waveform. So, how will your pulse waveform be like? So, this is nothing but a pressure. Your peripheral arterial pressure and this is nothing but against the time of the cardiac cycle. So, what happens? Initially, there will be a upstroke. The substroke we call it as a percussion wave. We will call it as a percussion wave. Okay. So this will correspond with the your isovolumetric contraction. Okay. The pressure inside the your peripheral vessel will be increasing. Then there will be a wave called as your tidal wave. So this is called as an tidal wave. This will match with your ejection. Then it will slowly come down. Then there, there will be a notch. This is called as your dichrotic notch. This dichrotic notch in the peripheral vessel will correlate with the incisura in the aortic pressure. Okay. Then a low amplitude dichrotic wave. Low amplitude dichrotic wave. So just to write about this. What is your percussion wave? Percussion wave is produced by Your isovolumetric contraction. 
okay then your tidal wave produced by blood flow into the carotids or we can call it as a, any, any of the peripheral vessels any of the peripheral vessels then dichrotic wave dichrotic wave dichrotic wave happen in the diastole and this wave is produced by due to transmission transmission of blood from small vessel into carotids into your carotids because of your peripheral resistance because of our peripheral resistance okay peripheral vascular resistance peripheral vascular resistance so what determines this uh, tidal wave am amplitude of this tidal wave amplitude of the tidal wave is determined by your cardiac output amplitude of the tidal wave is determined by the cardiac output whereas the amplitude of this dichrotic wave determined by the peripheral vascular resistance if, peri if your peripheral vascular resistance is high what happens more from the more of the blood from small vessel will go into the carotid more of the blood from the capillaries and small vessel will go into the carotid and which will produce a dichrotic wave usually normally physiologically your dichrotic wave is not felt only your tidal wave is felt when we palpate the pulse even the carotid or in the radial artery only your tidal wave is palpated the dichrotic wave is not palpated not felt because of your low amplitude so this is normal so only one waveform is felt that is tidal wave is felt the dichrotic wave is not felt because of its smaller amplitude compared to that of tidal wave so okay so how will you feel the pulse so how will you feel the pulse how to feel the pulse so commonly commonly feel feel pulse is radial artery and with the technique of three finger technique distal finger to prevent the back flow don't worry i will show all the images how to elicit pulse how to elicit your uh, coming things so you need not be worrying and a proximal finger to stabilize the artery and the middle finger to feel and count the pulse okay to feel and count the pulse so let me go to the image part so this is how you feel a pulse okay so this is your distal finger and this is your middle finger this is your proximal finger this is three finger technique to feel the pulse three finger technique to feel the pulse and distal finger to prevent the back flow of the blood and proximal finger to stabilize the artery and middle finger to feel and count the blood vessels okay so these are the image which i draw so this is uh, this is similar to sim something which we have drawn okay so here you see the cardiac cycle the pressure at the this around uh, 5 mm of mercury after your uh, isovolumetric contraction is going up to 80 then during the diastolic phase is going up to 120 uh, sorry during your ejection phase is going up to 120 and then slowly it will come down slowly it will come down to 80 then your aortic valve closes then your isovolumetric relaxation will come down again to zero then it will again go up to your 5 mm of mercury so this is all we have discussed and this is all about the aortic pressure this is about ventricular pressure so coming to pulse what are the things we will see in pulse first one is rate second one rhythm so this is how we have to describe the pulse okay rhythm third volume 
fourth character condition of the vessel or fifth sixth it is radio radio delay between two radio vessels radio radio delay and seventh it is radio thermal delay radio thermal delay okay for counting the rate and rhythm you have to use your radial artery for volume you have to use your carotid artery for character you have to use your carotid artery except few condition which we will be seeing in subsequent topics okay for character generally we will prefer carotid artery if the examiner asks for in which vessel you will see character your answer should be on carotid artery so condition of the vessel wall again radial artery so these are the arteries that are used for these things so next when we come to rate rate has to be counted for 1 full minute rate has to be counted for 1 full minute your normal pulse rate is 72 per minute with a range of 60 to 100 with a range of 60 to 100 if it goes less than 60 you will call it as bradycardia if it goes less than 60 you will call it as bradycardia so what are the causes of bradycardia we will split it into physiological your pharmacological and pathological and pathological causes so what are the physiological causes physiologically bradycardia is seen in athletes and during sleep and for some lean people so during sleep and for athletes and for lean people heart rate less than 60 is physiological and it is normal okay pharmacological or drugs induced drugs drugs causing bradycardia first one it is beta blocker next calcium channel blockers that is specifically dihydropyridines like verapamil and diltiazepam like what verapamil and diltiazepam this dhp is act directly on the heart and then digoxin okay pathologically will divide it into two things cardiac non cardiac what are the cardiac causes of bradycardia It's nothing but a av block or heart block in common term we call it as heart block okay so six sinus syndrome six sinus syndrome is nothing but your sa node because of age or because of some disease your sa node is not functioning so that your heart rate will come down then in inferior wall ma in inferior wall ma will get bradycardia okay the non cardiac causes first one is hypothyroidism hypothyroidism hypothermia or obstructive jaundice or obstructive jaundice will have bradycardia why obstructive jaundice will have bradycardia because of the deposition of the bilirubin onto the sa node which will in turn cause your six sinus syndrome okay then you are raised icd raised intracranial tension raised intracranial tension will cause bradic uh, will cause bradycardia this is nothing but called as your cushing's reflex then there is a term called as relative bradycardia there is a term called as relative bradycardia 
what is relative bradycardia generally when you have fever your heart rate should go up but in certain infectious disease your heart rate will not go up for 1 degree rise of fahrenheit your heart rate should go should increase by 10 per minute if this doesn't happen it is called as relative bradycardia for 1 degree rise of fahrenheit your heart rate will not increase by 10 per minute so we will call it as relative relative bradycardia for example if your temperatures are around 100 100 fahrenheit we will expect your heart rate to be 110 if it is 101 we will expect your heart rate to be 120 but for 101 degree if your heart rate is only 80 per minute we will call it as relative bradycardia 80 or 90 90 or 100 no matter what 80 or 90 or 100 we will call it as a relative bradycardia so cause of relative bradycardia it is seen in yellow fever which is called as phaget sign it was first discovered in yellow cardia by a person called phaget so it is called as phaget sign okay then your typhoid fever your entry typhoid or entry fever this is commonly this is commonly seen clinically then all viral fever or viral fever from dengue to covid patient will have relative bradycardia then leptospirosis leptospirosis will have relative bradycardia okay so these are some common causes of relative bradycardia so this is one of the favorite questions for examiner this relative bradycardia is one of the favorite questions for examiner so okay next we are going for tachycardia we call the tachycardia if your heart rate is more than 100 per minute if your heart rate is more than 100 per minute so again we will classify it broadly into physiological pharmacological and pathological okay so physiological cause of bradycardia sorry physiological cause of tachycardia we are almost well versed your infants will have tachycardia children will have tachycardia infants and children will have tachycardia then during exercise we will have tachycardia during anxiety we will have tachycardia during emotion we will have tachycardia when you are emotional you will have tachycardia and finally pregnancy will have tachycardia okay so pharmacologically anticholinergics some of the anticholinergics like atropin will cause bradycardia the adrenergics that is your beta agonist like your salbutamol most commonly used beta agonist is salbutamol adrenaline dopamine all this will cause tachycardia then caffeine caffeine will cause tachycardia and one more commonly used drug that is deriflin just a combination of theophylline will have your tachycardia deriflin is nothing but a combination of theophylline and etiophylline okay so again physiologically uh, pathologically we will divide it into cardiac and non cardiac okay so cardiac causes of bradycardia this nothing but your heart block whereas your cardiac causes of uh, tachycardia this your tachyarrhythmia any tachyarrhythmia from af to svt vt all will present with tachycardia okay then your anterior valvular when your uh, inferior valvular will present with bradycardia your anterior valvular will present with tachycardia okay then shock it can be cardiogenic or hypolemic 
any shock will present with tachycardia okay so non cardiac we will call it as high output state all high output states will have tachycardia what are the high output state first one this severe anemia severe anemia is a high output state okay then thyrotoxicosis your thyrotoxicosis is a high output state then your beri beri your vitamin b12 vitamin b1 deficiency beri beri is high output state fever fever is again a high output state then pages disease your pages disease of bone is a high output state then your cirrhosis cirrhosis of liver is a high output state all this high output state will invariably have tachycardia okay so this is about your rate so rate uh, normal rate is around 60 to 100 less than 60 we will call it as bradycardia more than 100 we will call it as tachycardia so your both bradycardia can be physiological pharmacological pathological and we have discussed it in it in detail so again there is a term called as relative tachycardia the patient should not have this much heart rate to the fever but we are having which means 1 degree fahrenheit increase will increase the heart rate by more than 10 per minute in relative body cardiac is less than 10 per minute whereas in relative body cardiac is more than 10 per minute so what are the cause of relative tachycardia it is very much uh, plus important when compared to relative bradycardia but let us let us all know what are the cause of relative tachycardia your acute rheumatic fever your acute rheumatic fever will have relative tachycardia the diphtheria diphtheria will have relative tachycardia and our most famous tuberculosis tuberculosis will have relative tachycardia these two are important acute rheumatic fever and tuberculosis these two presents with relative tachycardia so moving on to our next part is nothing but rhythm so rhythm should be checked in as i told earlier it should be checked in your radial artery so what is normal rhythm it should be regular for example take this as a your timeline here comes your first beat your second beat your third beat your fourth beat your fifth beat your sixth beat so all this interval should be equal all this interval should be equal so this is what we call it as a regular rhythm okay so what are the abnormal rhythm we have abnormal rhythms there are two abnormal rhythm one it can be regularly irregular or it is irregularly irregular one it is regularly irregular another it is irregularly irregular so when uh, it is regularly irregular the cause of regularly irregular rhythm are your ventricular bigeminate or ventricular trigeminate ventricular bigeminate or ventricular trigeminate is nothing but production of a ventricular premature complex once in two beats or once in three beats so i'll explain with the help of the diagram again so going for uh, your time so normal beat and abnormal beat a normal beat and abnormal beat a normal beat and abnormal beat so it will come like this this regularly irregular for one for one for a second beat it will be irregular this is called as your ventricular bigeminate okay then you will have a two regular beat and then an irregular beat you will have a two regular beat then an irregular beat so it will happen so this is called as your ventricular trigeminate so other causes of your uh, regular irregular so this is important ventricular bigeminate ventricular trigeminate are the most common cause of regular irregular pulse and other being your atrial tachyarrhythmias atrial tachyarrhythmias 
like your atrial flutter like your atrial flutter with fixed AV block. So this is something complicated which is uh, above your level but you should remember this ventricular bigemi and ventricular trigemini is important because of regular irregular pulse. Okay, so irregular irregular pulse here comes the favorite questions of examiner. What are the cause of regular irregular pulse? We will call it as VPCs and your atrial fibrillation. In the question, Tariyama could example irregular irregular causes, VPCs and atrial fibrillation. If you don't know, please avoid your exams. Okay, so this, this is very, very favorite and very, very most commonly asked questions, this question you will get invariably if you get a CVS case. So cause of irregular irregular pulse is VPC and atrial fibrillation and how will you differentiate this? Once you get the irregular irregular pulse, you have to check for next step, you have to check for your pulse deficit. The examiner will expect this point. If you tell your rectum is irregular irregular, the next point the examiner will ask what is the pulse deficit. So pulse deficit is nothing but count pulse rate for one minute. And ask uh, ask uh, ask your colleague to sim simultaneously. Both should be checked simultaneously for one minute. Both should be checked simultaneously. Normally or invariably your heart rate will be more than pulse rate. Heart rate will be more than pulse rate. If heart rate minus pulse rate is less than 10, that is your pulse deficit is less than 10, this is due to your irregular irregular pulse is due to your ventricular premature complex. Okay. If heart rate minus pulse rate is more than 10, that is your pulses deficit is more than 10, it is due to atrial fibrillation. So this is very, 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 very important and favorite question of the examiner. So how will you differentiate between your VPC and atrial fibrillation? First one, this pulse deficit is less than 10, here your pulse deficit is more than 10. Then in JVP, A wave. So JVP will be discussed later today. So JVP, A wave is present, whereas in your atrial fibrillation, A wave in JVP is absent. Okay. So S1 will be normal. Here S1 will be varying in intensity. In atrial fibrillation, your S1 will be varying in intensity. And if you do exercise, your VPC will become a regular, regular pulse. This irregular, irregular will disappear and will become a regular pulse. Whereas with the exercise, your AF will be persistently irregularly irregular. Okay. So these are the points. How will you differentiate between v, uh, VPC and AF? If you have, if you get a irregular irregular pulse, it is most commonly due to VPC and AF. Then to differentiate between VPC and AF, first thing we need is pulse deficit. Then you will go for JVP in A, A wave in JVP. Then S1 and then your exercise. Okay. So moving to the third point with pulse, what is the volume? So volume, where we will be checking volume? In the carotid artery. Volume will be checked in carotid artery. So volume is the indirect measure of your pulse pressure. So what is pulse pressure? Pulse pressure is normally systolic BP minus diastolic BP. So volume can be either normal volume. Normal volume indicates your pulse pressure is between 30 to 60 millimeter of mercury. Okay. Or else abnormally, abnormal volume can be two ways. It can be either low volume or it can be high volume. Okay, 
so low volume your pulse pressure is less than 30 and if it is high volume your pulse pressure is more than 60 okay so your causes of low volume pulse one first cause hypolemia there is no blood inside so your volume is low so next shock so these two are your non cardiac cause so your cardiac cause you are ms and then the sinus both sinotic this because of the sinuses the ejection of the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta is low so you are getting low volume pulse this as this low volume pulse in as we call it as a systolic decapitation low volume pulse in as is due to systolic decapitation so normally systolic bp will be reduced systolic bp will be reduced in af which we will call it as systolic decapitation this happens systolic decapitation is very specific for as low volume pulse with systolic bp less than 100 it is it will confirm a diagnosis of as so next one pulse pressure of more than 60 can be physiological physical what is can be physiologically seen in high output state okay high output state what are the high output state which we have already seen in pregnancy fever exercise your uh, high volume pulse can be physiological then your ar your mr your pda all this will present with all this regurgitant lesion all this shunt lesion will present with the high volume pulse one more cause of high volume pulse is are av fistula any atrial ventricular fistula in a particular limb will have a high volume pulse so some other ab- abnormal volume so this is important and some other less important abnormal volume or varying volume of pulse varying volume of pulse it is seen in atrial fibrillation and next anaiso pygmia anaiso pygmia is nothing but variable pulse in each limb that is your right upper limb is having high volume pulse whereas your left upper limb is having low volume pulse this is normally seen in takayasu arteritis takayasu arteritis is nothing but a vasculitis which affects a commonly medium sized vessel such as subclavian artery where uh, if the right subclavian artery is sub, uh, affected and it is obliterated as uh, right or left that particular part the particular artery will have low volume and uh, the contralateral the contralateral limb will have high volume pulse and which is called as anisopygmia so this is about volume then moving on to the fourth point of pulse we have character so character is important so each valve or lesion will have a particular character okay so this with the help of pulse and apical impulse when you take a cvs case with the help of the pulse and your apical impulse you should come to a diagnosis with the help of your pulse and, and uh, apical impulse you should come to a diagnosis and murmur is just confirming your diagnosis so the pulse apical impulse vachi idu dhaan indha patient ku vandu ms dhaan appdin solli neenga nanachi kondu poi mitral la vacha edm kekum okay your, your mdm you will hear your mdm so just with the murmur you cannot diagnose the valvular lesion with my experience so far i am telling just with the murmur this is valvular lesion the patient ku mdm dhaan kekudhu appdin nanacha unakku adu mdm maar irukum examiner poi paatha adu esm maar irukum illa adu psm maar irukum so all this murmur will be seeing later so your pulse and your apical impulse is very very important in diagnosing a valvular heart disease okay so pulse la romba important character 
so where you see character commonly you will see in carotid artery with few exemption you will use radial artery for collapsing pulse and your pulse is paradoxes and then your brachial artery for for your pulses this for okay so first character anything first normal what is the normal character it is called as catacrotic pulse now pathom la percussion wave vand tidal wave vand dicrotic notch irund dicrotic wave vanduchuna idu da normal pulse oda character this we will call it as a catacrotic pulse then pulses for the eight doctors for this nothing but low volume and doctors is nothing but slow rising so this is typically seen in aortic stenosis so let's assume the pulse every room let's assume okay so normal this is your normal pulse whereas your pulse is for said data should be the volume will be low and to rise slow so this is pulses for the head darts the volume will be low this is the normal volume your volume is low similarly it is not rising normally it is rising slowly and coming to the peak late when compared to the normal pulse so this is typical of aortic stenosis okay then the most important water hammer pulse or collapsing pulse or corrigan pulse whatever you can call so how it will be it is a high volume pulse it has a sharp rise and the rise is ill sustained and the size is ill sustained and it will have a sharp fall why the sharp fall happen the sharp fall happen due to distal diastolic run off of your blood column from artery into your left ventricle as i told earlier cardiac cycle la at the end of the ejection at the end of the ejection phase left atrium la pressure kammiya irukudhu artery la pressure adhigama irukudhu so what happens artery la irundhu left ventricle ku la blood vara try pannum if your aortic valve is competent it will prevent if your aortic valve is not competent the blood will come from the artery into the left ventricle okay so i have told what is this cause of water hammer pulse so water hammer pulse is most commonly due to aortic regurgitation so this is important water hammer pulse irukudha appadina aortic regurgitation irukudha nartham maybe maybe hmm? not necessarily ar it can be also seen in pda pulses that are arteriosus it can be also seen in mr okay so how will be the pulse wave pulse wave eppadi irukum your normal pulse wave will be like this whereas your water hammer pulse 
a false wave will be will be like this it will have a sharp rise and a sharp fall there will be no this diastolic notch because kadukkaradhukku atrial valve competent ah illa so there will be no notch and will fall sharply so how to see this water hammer pulse or a collapsing pulse and this is a common technique you have to uh, feel first you have to feel the pulse normally as here then you have to hold this hand hold this hold your hand like this you have to feel both the radial artery and ulnar artery like this with hand here then you have to raise the hand above the level of carotid artery above the level of carotid artery you have to raise the hand what happens takkunu vandu tattu you will have a high volume pulse which collapses easily high volume pulse which collapses easily high volume pulse which collapses easily so that's why it is called as collapsing pulse that's why it is called as collapsing pulse okay so you have to feel your both your radial artery and your ulnar artery simultaneously both your radial artery and ulnar artery simultaneously you have to feel like this and you have to raise the hand above the level of you have to feel it with here and you have to raise your hand above the level of your carotid artery and because of this diastolic run of blood flow there will be a sharp rise and sharp fall if you hit your hand and will fall sharply if you hit your hand it will fall sharply so this is how you have to demonstrate your collapsing pulse okay so next character fourth character this nothing but yeah pulses dysperience pulses dysperience nothing but as i told earlier what are the pulses seen in radial artery their pulses dysperience is seen in your best seen in, it is seen in all artery but it is best seen in your brachial artery it is uh, it is also seen in carotid artery it is also seen in radial artery but it is best felt it is best felt in brachial artery okay there is two peaks in systole there is two peaks in systole so we are going to draw our normal pulse wave so this is how your normal pulse wave look whereas your pulse wave dysperience pulse wave will be like this here your percussion wave is separate percussion wave is separate and your tidal wave is separate whereas this will be normal this will be normal we are getting two waves we are getting two peaks in systole because we are feeling both uh, percussion wave and tidal wave of for different times so there is two things there are two peaks the seen in is most commonly seen in aortic regurgitation and this is the most specific and this is the most specific character of pulse for aortic regurgitation okay whereas your pulses your uh, collapsing pulse is the most common pulse seen in atrial regurgitation and pulses dysperience is the most specific pulse for your aortic regurgitation and it is seen usually seen with severe ear with severe ear and with moderate ear if it is associated with your ear and with hcm is nothing but a hyper obstetric cardiomyopathy where you will get a jerky pulse and you will see two pulse two peaks in the systole and next this dichrotic pulse here you will get one peak in systole and one peak in diastole here can i tell you we will feel only a tidal wave whereas we will not feel our dichrotic wave isn't it so this is our normal pulse wave whereas dichrotic pulse you will feel both your tidal wave and you will feel both your dichrotic wave dichrotic wave oda 
இம்பல்ஸ் ஜாஸ்தி ஆகணும்னா இட் வில் ஹாவ் அ இன்கிரீஸ் பெரிஃபரல் வாஸ்குலர் ரெசிஸ்டன்ஸ் இன்கிரீஸ் பெரிஃபரல் வாஸ்குலர் ரெசிஸ்டன்ஸ் will increase your uh, uh, dichrotic waves amplitude and it will be felt so it will feel as a dichrotic pulse okay so what are the causes causing increased uh, peripheral vascular resistance one very low cardiac output with very low cardiac output what happens there will be severe sympathetic stimulation severe sympathetic stimulation leading to arterial vasoconstriction because of the vasoconstriction there will be increased peripheral vascular resistance so your dichrotic wave is felt so your dichrotic wave is felt okay so one cause of very low cardiac output it is severe left ventricular failure severe left ventricular failure then shock shock it can be due to both cardiac and hypovolemic both will have reduced cardiac output and in turn will cause your peripheral vascular resistance to go high and some other causes like your typhoid fever your typhoid fever or enteric fever will directly increase the peripheral vascular resistance and thereby causing dichrotic pulse so next character is nothing but your pulse alterants pulse alterants is nothing but a alternating high volume and low volume pulse pulse but it is regular but it is regular okay so in the pulse epdi irukum so this is amplitude and this is okay so or pulse high volume we we don't call it as normal it is not high volume it, is, it can be normal volume one is normal volume and one is low volume so another will be low volume this is high volume and this is low volume this is high volume this is low volume so in the mari irukum so what happens so how can we diagnose this uh, one differential diagnosis of pulses or alterants is pulses by gemini pulses by gemini but this will be as i told earlier it will be irregular your pulses alterants will be irregular whereas your pulses by gemini will be irregular so how to diagnose pulses alterants just uh, tie a bp cuff bp cuff kaiyila kettite you go to uh, systol- you go you go to systolic bp and systolic bp oda 20 mm of mercury adhigama vachite if you slowly come down you will hear this this pulse alone so if you come uh, for example idu 120 la irukudu you will feel you will feel only this at 120 so okay if you slowly come down to 100 you will start feeling this pulse also you will start feeling this pulse also with the palpation method okay so last the point 120 mala if you go to 140 and then you slowly come down to 120 at 120 you will start feeling this pulse and then if you slowly come down to 120 you will start feeling this pulse also so you will feel extra pulse when you come at 100 so again if you go back to 120 this will disappear this pulse will disappear if you go back to 120 so this is how you can uh, feel pulses alterants okay so next seventh character one of the most important character and one of the most favorite question for examiner this pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes is also best feel in daily lottery we can't check pulses alter uh, pulses paradoxes with your uh, carotid artery so pulses are paradoxes nothing but what happens normally normally during inspiration there will be reduced lv blood volume left ventricular blood volume kammiya da irukum so there will be low cardiac output so there will be low systolic bp okay so normally during expiration 
why there is low uh, blood volume your lung has expanded your lung has expanded so there is more amount of blood inside the lung when compared to the more amount, when you compare it with the left ventricular oda lung ku blood jaasti a irukudu so there is low blood volume during expiration what happens your lung will skews your lung will skews the blood skews the blood into left atrium and left ventricle so what happens your cardiac output is increased in other words your systolic bp will increase in other words expiration appo cardiac output adhigama irukum so systolic bp adhigama irukum inspiration appo cardiac output low a irukum so systolic bp low a irukum so normally this different systolic bp difference between expiration and inspiration is around 0 to 10 so this is physiological if this difference is more than 10 or the fall in systolic bp is more than 10 fall in systolic bp is more than 10 during inspiration you will call it as pulses paradoxes you will call it as pulses paradoxes so why this pulses paradoxes happens so what are the causes of this pulses paradoxes so again we will divide it into cardiac and your non cardiac so cardiac causes of pulses tamp- pulses uh, paradoxes are three your tamponade cardiac tamponade your constrictive pericarditis and your restrictive cardiomyopathy so i'll explain why there is pulses paradoxes in this stage so normally normally consider this as your heart this is your right atrium this is your left atrium this is your right ventricle and this is your left ventricle so normally what happens during inspiration during inspiration there will be increased venous return there will be increased venous return so there is more blood inside right atrium which means there is no more blood inside right ventricle so normally what happens your right ventricle will expand outside so your septum is intact in in midline septum is in since the right ventricle is able to expand here your septum is in midline not disturbing your left ventricle okay so what is tamponade tamponade is nothing but collection of fluid inside the pericardium which is not allowing your heart to expand freely so tamponade irukra po what will happen there will be pressure from outside there will be pressure from outside so this blood have to disturb your so your septum bulges into lv so that will automatically reduce your lv blood left ventricular blood so that will reduce your cardiac output that will reduce your systemic bp much more much more than that 10 mm of mercury okay so this is what will happen in tamponade whereas what will happen in your constrictive pericarditis what will happen in your constrictive pericarditis or your restrictive cardiomyopathy what will happen is that your pericarditis is so stiff or your cardiac muscle is so stiff so again it is not able to relax outside so it will so the septum will bulge here so again your lv blood will come down so your cardiac output will come down and your systolic bp will come down so these are the cardiac causes of pulses paradoxes and some of the non cardiac causes of pulses paradoxes most importantly your acute exacerbation most of you will be answering correctly your acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma or copd what happens in your bronch- in case of bronchial asthma or copd acute exacerbation the patient will be so dyspneic the patient will be so dyspneic that your respiratory rate will be high if your respiratory rate is really high your inspiration will be high if your inspiration is high the amount of blood coming inside the right atrium will be also high so if this is high here also the blood is high 
bulge, so automatically your septum will bulge. Your septum will bulge both direction, but since the blood is very high, this alone is not enough, so the septum will also bulge into the left ventricle, so there is less LV blood. So again, your systolic BP will come down. So other causes, pulmonary embolism. In pulmonary embolism also, the patient will be tachypneic. Then, in severe metabolic acidosis, in case of metabolic acidosis, the patient, the body has to compensate with the help of, it has to wash out the carbon dioxide, so the patient will be tachypneic. Then, obesity. Obesity also, most commonly, after vigorous exercise, the patient will be tachypneic. So, this also can cause pulses paradoxes. So, how will you check pulses paradoxes? Again, ask the patient to lie down comfortably. Ask the patient not to inspire or uh, expire forcefully. Ask him to lie down comfortably. And then, increase your kapha uh, You have to increase. You have to increase your pressure more than that of your systolic BP. So at systolic, uh, then keep your uh, stretch in, in the stretch in your cubital fossa and you will feel the cross curve sound at inspiration. You will feel the cross curve sound at inspiration. Also, you will feel that uh, then if you come down, tell me for, ex for example, 120 la, you will feel your cross curve sound. So this is, you will feel the sound only in expiration. So if you come to 110, you will feel both this sound. You will feel both this sound. At 120, you can feel only this expiration sound. At 110, you can fall. You can feel both this expiration and inspiration thing. So can you get me? So you have to subtract both systolic BP at expiration and systolic BP at inspiration. Okay. So this is how it works. So if it is less than 10, it is normal. If it is more than 10, we call it as pulses paradoxes. So next, after finishing the character, we are moving on to the next point. So one more point, we have something, something called as reverse pulses paradoxes. So normally what we know, during inspiration, your systolic BP should come down. But sometime during inspiration, your systolic BP will increase. Will increase. Okay. So this is called as reverse paradox. So what are the cause of reverse paradox? Your left ventricular failure with intermittent positive pressure ventilation. The patients with left ventricular failure with intermittent positive pressure ventilation and HOCM. So these two are important. These two are important causes of reverse pulses paradoxes, and there are multiple causes which is not that much important. So next, uh, there is one more thing called as in constrictive pericardial. What I told in constrictive pericardial is we will have pulses paradoxes, but sometimes constrictive pericarditis can be without pulses paradoxes. It is associated with ASD or VSD. It is associated with ASD or VSD. This can be this uh, constrictive pericarditis can be without pulses paradoxes. Remember, patient is having constrictive pericarditis, but there is a hole here. So what happened? Blood will go this direction also. So there is no need of this septum bulging into the left ventricle. So blood will automatically go into the left side without uh, bulging the septum into the left side of the heart. So the patient will not have pulses paradoxes if you are constantly pericardic is associated with EHD or VHD. Okay. So this is about pulses paradoxes. Then going to the next point on pulse, condition of vessel wall. So condition of vessel wall. So it should be normally not thick. The vessel wall is thick 
are hard is due to secondary to atherosclerosis so this is important about the condition of the vessel wall we will feel the condition of the vessel wall with the help of the proximal finger with the help of the proximal finger so this finger with this finger you have to feel the condition of vessel wall also okay so next sixth point this radio radio delay how to look for radio delay delay simultaneously see for radial pulse rendu pulse um ore nerathil irukanum both radial artery should feel the pulse wave at the same time if it is not feeling na oru kai la vegama avum inoru kai oru kai la yerle ravum inoru kai la edam unda we will call it as radial delay delay some of the cause of radio radio delay or takayasu arthritis so in case of takayasu arthritis there is obstruction because of the vasculitis there is obstruction of one side so that side the blood will come to the the pressure wave will come late bit late the pressure wave will come bit late bit, uh, bit late so there will be a delay so next in case of your thoracic outlet syndrome such as your cervical rib these are all something we will learn in ortho your surgery, even in surgery also the there is a this is called as uh, we, we, we are having a case called as tao or peripheral artery peripheral artery disease where you will be learning all this about the cervical rib and subclavian artery obstruction so all this so in case of your thoracic outlet obstruction where there is a cervical rib, in case of cervical for example your cervical rib is obstructing your uh, subclavian artery you will be having a radio radio delay okay then your aortic arch aneurysm there is a aneurysm in aortic arch what happened the before the left right right artery has come up and there is a aortic arch aneurysm which is causing less amount of blood or late blood into the your left vessel so what that will cause that will cause a radio radio delay so these are, are some common causes of radio radio delay so then your radio femoral delay the radio femoral delay so normally your carotid artery left ventricle contract aayi blood left ventricle vandu poi 30 milliseconds kaluche you will feel pulse you will feel the pulse wave in carotid artery whereas the time taken to reach brachial artery is some 60 millisecond then your femoral artery is your 75 millisecond and your radial artery is very 80 millisecond so this clinically the 75 millisecond and 80 millisecond both are vidyasam idu irukadu so radial 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 and femoral rendu simultaneous ah feel panna you will get a obstro simultaneously but in certain conditions it may be we may be there will be delay there will be delay in femoral when compared to radial so what most commonly your coarctation of aorta coarctation of aorta is nothing but it is there is a construction in aorta so blood vandu femoral artery ki reach aagudhu it may be late and then in your aortic dissection in your aortic dissection also it will take time it will take time to reach the femoral artery so you will clinically feel your radio femoral delay so here we are finishing pulse and it's almost around 730 karan karan are you there karan are you there sir yes sir ah shall we stop here sir it's sir. almost one and a half hour sir okay so epa sir continue panikla ah i'll i'll tell you next class epa i'll tell you or okay, shall we continue with jv sir sir i think it's yes yeah, sir yeah yeah sir number next class la continue panikla okay okay i think yeah yeah